Hey guys, it's Carla. Today I'm going to paint this foggy lake scene. I'm using acrylic paint on an 8x10 canvas panel. And I've already covered the panel in um, a coat of a mixture of blue, yellow, and white. I don't know if you can tell how, let me see, put something white against it so you can tell the shade that I've made. It's, um, it's very light, but it's not white. Now this is going to be a good lesson in uh, creating a fog and, um, you know, distance on the lake. Now the first thing I'm going to do is mix up this bluish greenish color that um, you see throughout the whole painting. And I'm going to end up using a lot of that so I'm going to go ahead and mix up quite a big pile. So it's mostly blue. And I'm just going to slowly add yellow to it until I get the, the shade that I want. Because if you add too much yellow, you'll get like a green green. And that's not what we're going for. Um, I'm going to add a little white right now just to so I can see what shade I'm getting. It doesn't matter what brush you use for this. I'm just using it to mix the colors. This is the same thing I did in for the background. I just added a lot of white to it. Um, that might be still be a little too blue. Okay, now this might not be the shade, the exact shade as we see in the reference photo, but it is a pretty shade, so that's what I'll use. I'm going to try to scoop my paint up into a smaller pile so that it doesn't dry out too quickly. Now I'm going to start with my little pointed brush. It's just a round pointed brush and I want to decide where my horizon line will be, where the water starts. And it looks like it's about two thirds of the way down the canvas. And it, this doesn't have to be a straight line because there's land back there. So if it was just like, a, like an ocean horizon against the sky, it would have to be straight and level, but when there's land back there, um, it can be any shape. Okay, so that just kind of gives me an idea of where, where to start with my trees and bushes back there. Um, now I'm going with a darker, I do want to add a little bit of white to this, but I'm going with a darker shade than I see in in the reference photo because when we put our fog over it it's going to lighten it. All right so I see a tree about right here. I'm just going to start at the base of the tree. Very light touch. And get even lighter as I go up to get that point on the brush. And I want to keep plenty of water in this paint so that I can get those uh, thin lines. And the most important thing to remember about trees and limbs is that 
first of all, they it, they have to make sense. Like, you can't have you can't have a, a lamb out here thicker than it is here because it wouldn't support itself. So you got to keep that in mind, and you've got to keep in mind that um, your paint needs to be very thin and you have to have a sharp tip on your brush and you know you can you can get that with a little round pointed brush you can get it with um, like an angle brush you know it's got a thin edge on it um, or a liner brush like a long haired liner brush which I am going to use some for some of these smaller lambs. So as long as it has a point on the end of it, um, you can use just about any brush. In fact, even as, as wide and poofy as this brush is, if you'll notice, it's got a good tip on it. So you could still do these little tiny lines with that. It really doesn't matter what's what you've got back here as long as it comes into a point. So there's different brushes you could use for this. So with this brush, I'm going to make, you know, some of my limbs, my bigger limbs. But then I'm going to move on to my liner brush for the smaller branches. This liner brush is very fluffy and poofy right now but as soon as I wet it it gives me that tip that sharp tip that I need and because it's long bristles it holds plenty of paint as long as it's a uh, very thin paint you want to keep water in it and I'm kind of swiggling back and forth to load the brush and then I've got a sharp point on it so now I can come in here and just put in random limbs you know you don't have to get down here and get all detailed with it as long as you've got some limbs in there and they're going in the right direction that's all we need on this and um, the other thing I was going to tell you about the branches is they don't they don't start at the tree and come out. They always go or almost always go up and out, like a it V's off. You don't want it to look like a stick man. Also, notice where I'm holding the brush. I'm holding it way back here at the end. And that will help me to get these um, kind of messy looking branches. If your paint is not coming off of your brush smoothly, you just don't have enough water in it. So just add some more water.
Okay, now we have we have this bigger tree back here. And then there's some bushes and trees. You know, you can't really tell a lot of what's going on back here. So I'm just gonna use my Deerfoot stippler for that. Um, if you don't have a Deerfoot stippler, you could use um, you could use just a hog bristle brush, or even a like a smaller. Um, that's not. Yeah, you could use that. What is that? Oh well, that's just another um, blender brush, or you could use a smaller mop brush. This is actually a makeup brush but I use it for this, so. Anyway, so you could, there's there's different brushes you could use to get a similar effect. And I'm not gonna wet this brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and dip into this color I've been using. And start tapping in some bushes and random shapes. I'm being careful not to make everything the same height back here. Now I see a little bit of, like right through here, there's a little more yellow than there is in the rest of the photo. So I'm just gonna just lightly tap in some of that. Okay, now I want the reflection of all of this. I'm gonna mix up some more of that lighter shade we've been using. Okay, so reflection is just what it sounds like. Just kind of a mirrored image. Okay, so I've got my reflection in of the bushes back here. And um, don't feel like it has to be exact. Just, you know, get kind of a similar um, image as you have up here. And now we're going to do the same thing with this tree. And don't freak out over that. I know there's a lot of limbs and branches and things. But um, like I said, it doesn't have to be exact so you, you just want the indication of a um, reflection here and keep in mind too that we're gonna have these swans back here covering part of this so this is not gonna be something that really sticks out at you so don't stress over it and also you can do it like this and start here at the trunk and bring it down and work that way, or you can flip it over and work upright and just kind of create that tree. Now there's not room for the whole thing to be here, so it's gonna go off the canvas here. So you're not gonna be having to put in all of this anyway. Now, I don't know if you can tell here, but um, once I got my larger branches in, my larger limbs, 
um, I, I, I didn't even look up here to do all this because it doesn't matter. You know, nobody's going to look closely at each little limb and branch to make sure that you got the reflection right. So don't stress over that. Just put in a bunch of lines like you did up here. Okay. Now, I want to, back here where these bushes are, if you look closely at the reference photo, you can see some um, limbs and branches and stems and all that. So I'm just going to kind of put the indication of some of that in there. Most of it you won't even be able to see, but the ones that you do see will make it more believable. Okay, so I got some stems and things going on back there. And I put a few down here too, but honestly, there's gonna be so much going on right in here that that's really not important. Okay, now the more I look at this, the more green I see. So I am gonna pick up a little bit of um, yellow again. And just kind of glaze it over this certain areas. I don't want to cover up all of my blue, but this yellow that I'm putting in there is going to uh, become green against that color we've already got on there. So just want a little hint of that color in there. Okay. Now the same way we did this tree, we're gonna do these, these three back here, except that they are larger because they're closer to us and they're darker because they're closer to us. So I'm gonna use this, this darker blue and yellow mixture for these three trees right here. So I've got Pretty big one right here and it goes all the way off the canvas so once I get my line in there I can come back and thicken you know make it a little thicker toward the bottom so that it can support itself and then I can come back and add um, the limbs and branches, but I'm going to go ahead and get all three of my tree trunks in. This one comes, starts down here, it kind of angles toward the right. I've got to keep plenty of water on my brush. And it goes off the canvas. And then we've got one over here a bit. Making it bigger and bigger. There we go. Helps to turn the can canvas to the side. Okay. And then the reflection. 
collection of those. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in before I get the confusion of all the limbs and things. Okay, so I've got all three of my trees, tree trunks in and the reflections. So now I'm just gonna go in and put in my limbs and branches. I'm gonna do it the same way I did that one. These are just a little bigger. Now I have almost randomly just put um, put in branches and some of them don't even connect to anything. It's just, you just want a lot going on in there. And if you want to use your Deerfoot Stippler again for some of the denser areas, you can do that. So I'm gonna use that same color and just where the limbs are very dense, I'm just gonna tap in just so that it's not too bare. pretty dense up here but this this front tree is going to be covering a lot of that but back behind it I can tell it's dense this and that one. I think I'll go ahead and pick up some of that color and do that back here. I think it'll, I think that makes the trees look a little more real. Okay, so then I'm gonna tap in some down here too. And in here. Okay, now I have, um, I've got all of my back trees in, all of my back bushes, all the reflections of those, and I have dried my canvas. I've dried it really well and I've let it cool off because for this next step you want to make sure that it's as dry and ready for another layer as possible. So dry and cooled off. And now I'm going to use my big mop brush. Um, I mean you can use any size but I like the big one for, for this because so that I don't get any little, um, like I feel like if I, I feel like if I used the small one, I would get little 
clumps of um, shapes and I don't want that so this one will give me a smoother coverage okay so what I'm gonna do is wet my mop brush and I'm gonna come right over here to this this lighter blue shade that we have if you need to mix up some more go ahead and do that and I'm gonna start and pick up some more of them I'm gonna let my paper towel soak up some of that water so that I don't have so much on there Now, I'm gonna start down here in the water because it's darker than the sky is for whatever reason, I don't know. But, so with that light color, I don't wanna do a whole lot of rubbing on this because it will still rub that paint off underneath if you rub at it too much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay down this color first and then I can come back and really dry my brush and get a smoother texture. And I don't feel like that's dark enough, so I'm gonna pick up some of that darker shade. Again, I don't wanna rub. I'm afraid I'll rub off that paint underneath, so I'm trying to just st stick with tapping this on. Okay, now I ran out of that color, so I mixed mixed some more of it up. And what I want to do now is pick up some white, just a little bit of that color. I just want like a pale version of that color. I barely want it to be colored at all. It's gonna be almost white, but not quite. Okay, now this is gonna be our fog color. So remember, we made these trees and bushes darker than what we want them to turn out. And that's because when I put this over it, because it has the white in it, it's gonna, uh, lighten those. So I'm trying to evenly distribute it into the mop brush. And again, I'm gonna tap this on. And I think it needs more um, white in it. Okay, there we go. Now see how when, um, 
when I start putting it over these bushes, you can really tell that it's it's going to kind of make them look like they're in fog. Okay, so now I've got that foggy look back there. Um, but I do want this to be more blue. So um, I've switched to my smaller uh, mop brush. And I'm not wetting it. And I'm going to dip into that color without any white in it. Evenly distribute the paint. I just want to tap this in but I want to leave it lighter right here because in my reference photo I see that it's dark down here like a darker blue and it's lighter up here so I want to leave that I don't want a hard line there but I want to gradually get lighter as I go up Okay, now that I've got my foggiest areas the way I want them, now I'm going to look around for any anything that we've already got painted. I'm not talking about the swans or the weeds right here or this bigger tree. But the rest of this, I'm going to look and see if I want any of it to be a little bit darker. Because this whole thing is not like, like right over here, you've got this really light. You can barely see that tree um, or its reflection. But then as you come over here, it slowly gets a little bit light, uh, darker. And that's because they're closer to you. But I want to get rid of some of this fog right in here on the trees. So I'm using my flat hog bristle brush. And I don't want much paint on it, but I'm picking up that bluish yellow color without the white in it and I'm just going to tap in a little bit darker shade right up the center of the tree and the reason I'm using the hog bristle brush is because um, it won't give me a hard line, and I don't want a hard line on this because I've, after I've already put the fog in, um, that that dulled down my, you know, kind of fuzzed up my edges, and I want to keep that effect. I, I don't want this to be crisp. Okay, and then. I see an area down here that's really dark. So what I'm gonna do there is pick up that color and add a little bit of brown to it. Now 
Now I want to keep in mind that this is water so I can go back and forth like this to uh, to indicate little ripples in the water. may even have a little bit of black in it. I don't want to, to leave out the dark areas. You know, I always tell you, don't be afraid of the dark. It's important to, to get those darker shades in there. Okay, now I want to put my largest tree in, and it looks like it starts right here, a little in front of these. Like these right here start here. This one starts more this way. And you can use your little round brush for that. I'm gonna use a uh, angle brush, but you could use a flat brush, just whatever. Okay, again, I need some more of that color. And I'm gonna put a little black in it, a little brown. Okay, so I'm gonna start it about right here. I'm gonna go thin first and then I can come back and thicken it. But I want to, to get it placed where I want it. Okay, now I can, I'm gonna leave it thin at the top. Down here, I'm gonna press harder so that it gets thicker. And it ends right here. So there's my main trunk. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the reflection in for that. And then there's some stuff going on right here. I guess the land that the tree's sitting on. So I'm just gonna kind of tap in some dark color right there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put in some branches or limbs. And now with my long liner brush, I'm gonna put in the smaller branches.
Then again with my Deerfoot stippler, I'm gonna put in some of the denser branches. Still using that dark color. Now I see back here where there's a, a little piece of land where these trees are sitting. So I'm going to try to mix up that color again. It's not going to be exact, but I'm just using my hog bristle brush to tap this in. Okay, now I'm ready to put in these weeds out here. And I want I want all of those colors in there, but I want it to be more brown than anything. So I'm going to add quite a bit of brown to that mixture. A little more black. I want a really dark color, but I don't want it to be just a boring brown black. So I want to make sure I have kind of a blue shade in there too. All right, I'll float my brush and clean it. You don't want to ever leave your brushes sitting in the water. Um, I know that I'm sure you see artists do that, but it does ruin your brushes because the the water gets um, up into the ferrule and you know this wood starts about right here so if water gets up in there and gets into the wood it starts swelling it and it cracks your finish on your brush and it just ruins it so um, each time you use a brush just take the time to clean it clean it and dry it okay um, so what I'm going to use for these weeds is my palette knife. And um, you can use different, let's see what, um, well, this one's about the same size as far as this short area. Um, you can use a plastic one, but this is actually too long for what we need. So we need something short. You can use... Um, you can take a, like an old credit card or something and cut it up and maybe cut it in a strip about that wide. You just want something thin and kind of sharp. Okay. So I'm going to load, just kind of run my brush through the paint. And then I'm going to start at the base of the uh, weeds and just bring them up. And the reason I'm using this instead of a liner brush or something is because I like this really sharp, bold effect. But a liner br brush would work too. So if you don't have a palette knife or don't feel comfortable using it, then... Just use a liner brush.
I want to make some of my weeds taller than others and maybe angled like coming out that way. Now in order to get some of this more dense um, weeds, I'm gonna come in sideways with my brush and just pull it down. And again, you could use, I meant my palette knife, uh, you could use a brush for this if you're more comfortable with it. Okay, now after you've got your palette knife work in, you can go back to this liner brush and put in some of the more curved uh, weeds. It's easy to get carried away with this and just keep going because it's fun and it makes a bold statement. Okay, so now we need our little swans or ducks or geese or whatever they are. I don't know my birds, but so I'm going to use my little round brush for this because it has a point on the end of it and this is some pretty um, small details. Not that I'm going to do details like eyes and stuff, but just the shape of the bird itself is small so it helps to have a, um, a tip on a point on your brush. Okay, I had to add some white to my palette. And if you want to um, draw these in first with, you know, a charcoal pencil or something, then it might help to do that. And I might end up wishing that I had, but I'm going to try it with just the brush.
Now I'm going to just use this dark color we already have to put the little dark areas on the head and the beak. Okay, I've got those dark, dark areas in. Now I've rinsed my brush, and I'm gonna go back over this white again to brighten it up. And I've got to put the reflection of the white. It's actually nothing real distinct. It's just kind of an indication of a reflection. Okay, I want a little bit of a shadow color for that white to kind of indicate wings right there. Okay, I also want to brighten up the head a little bit. Now I see that this area down here is even darker than, um, you know, we put some of that dark in there, but I'm gonna use my hog bristle brush and darken that a little bit more. Just tapping against what's already there. I don't, I don't want to make these sharp edges. I want to leave this kind of fuzzy, but I want it darker. And then as it gets up back here, it fades off lighter.
Okay, now I also want to take my little pointed brush, pick up some white, and mix with this dark color. I don't want it to be too bright, too light. There we go, I want a little blue in it. Okay. I'm gonna water it down a little bit. And then I can very faintly see different places in the water where where there's little horizontal um, ripples. And especially, and honestly I don't see it in the reference photo, but I'm going to put it in there just to make it look more believable. So right here where these weeds would be going, um, sitting in the water, I'm going to put a little water line there. To make it look more like water. And when you have a reflection like this, if you'll go over it with some of these, that again indicates that that it's a reflection because it's in the water. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. Please do that. And um, check out my other videos. I've got a lot of videos out there and adding more almost daily right now. So, you know, what else have I got to do? I'm stuck at home during this pandemic. So... I paint so and I think you should too so if you try this share it on my Facebook page I'd love to see it and until next time thanks guys